but it means that what we do as those that are here is we take that message to go further and to spread it. And there are things that I learned in, in just preparing for today. The first off is that who John Lewis is. And one of the most important things, so I was teaching uh, a couple of the other fraternity that kind of represent here, <coughs> is that there's something about a brotherhood or a sisterhood. You know, and I can go into what probably the best and the most exclusive sisterhood there is, but I'm not going to do that. And, uh, so we'll <laughs> I'm going to ask the men of uh, Sigma to come and to give remarks. Because one of the things I found out about, about uh, Representative is he was a Sigma. And that means a lot because coming from where he came from, the, he went to he went to a school in Nashville, and there's something to say about that legacy. So with that, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Garrett. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we certainly want to thank uh, Buffalo Soldiers for inviting us here uh, today. I want to take pause uh, to have our brothers, some of our brothers who are here. Uh, to introduce themselves, uh, and then we'll say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. My Good name afternoon. is Kevin Campbell, born and raised from Toledo, Ohio. Hey, okay. Huh? <laughs> That's your position. Oh, and I'm the treasurer for our chapter here. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Curtis Smith, born and raised here in Toledo, Ohio, BG alum. Uh, I am the chapter's chaplain. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jerome Davis. I am not born or raised, nor do I even live in Toledo, Ohio, nowhere near here. But I am the chapter president, and I came to be with the brothers and you all today. My name is Jonathan Turner. I was born in Northern Virginia, but I was raised here in Toledo, and I've uh, been a, a member of Phi Beta Sigma since 1981. And uh, I've always been uh, an honor to be part of a uh, strong brotherhood and was a uh, very uh, happy to find out a long time ago that John Lewis was part of our brotherhood and uh, we're taking time to uh, commemorate him on uh, his home tour. And again, good evening. I'm Willie Garrett and I serve as the immediate past president of our chapter. I also serve as the assistant state director for the state of Ohio, Phi Beta Sigma. And then as of yesterday, I am on the regional board for the Great Lakes region uh, for Phi Beta Sigma. They just found that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, congrats. So, so we do have a couple of comments. We do, again, want to thank uh, Buffalo Soldiers for the invite to uh, our mayor. Thank you so much for uh, the call. And to uh, Bishop Brian Hall, thank you for the space um, that, that we're here today. Uh, we the brothers of Phi Beta Sigma Incorporated, and more specifically, Beta Phi Sigma Alumni Chapter of Toledo, the Lambda Epsilon Chapter of the University of Toledo, and the Epsilon Phi Chapter at the Bowling Green State University, joins you in commemorating the life and legacy of the late Congressman, the Honorable Brother John Robert Lewis. He who will remain a civil rights icon will be remembered for the blood he shed during the struggle against racial discrimination. The Honorable Brother John Robert Lewis, one of the original Freedom Riders, Chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the youngest speaker at the March on Washington, leader of the march from Selma to Montgomery, member of Congress representing the people of Georgia for 33 years, will be inducted this evening into the Omega chapter of the Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. He is an example of being concerned for the least of us that trickled down to this great fraternity, and his life of service is a reflection of who we are. Brother Lewis not only said, but he also loved this country. He was a supporter of the fight against racial injustice. Even in his latter days, at the age of 80, and battling stage four pancreatic cancer, he took pride 
as he stood without assistance, tall in statue and firm, with his arms crossed on 16th Street Northwest in Washington, D.C., what we now know as Black Lives Matter Plaza. He's pictured standing at the top of two block long asphalt canvas giving affirmation that indeed black lives matter. We, the brothers of Phi Beta Sigma, find it a privilege and an honor to be asked to give words about this awesome brother of ours. And in searching for the right words to say, we decided to use the words already spoken by him. Words like, and I quote, I appeal to all of you to get into this great revolution that is sweeping this nation. Get in and stay in the streets of every city, every village and hamlet of this nation until true freedom comes, until the revolution of 1776 is complete, spoken at the 1963 March on Washington. In his 2017 memoir, Cross That Bridge, a vision of change and the future of America, he wrote this. Freedom is not a state. It is an act. It is not some enchanted garden perched high on a distant plateau where we can finally sit and rest. Freedom is the continuous action we will all and we all must take. And each generation must do its part to create an even more fair and more just society. Brother Lewis also once stated, we have been too quiet for too long. There comes a time when you have to say something. You have to make a little noise. You have to move your feet. This is the time. We are less than 100 days from making our voice count. Brother Lewis said in his 2012 speech, my dear friends, your vote is precious, almost sacred. It is the most powerful nonviolent tool we have to create a more perfect union. To those who are gathered here, let's continue the fight against injustice. Let's make a promise that this commemoration will not just be a check the box. Let this not be a moment in time, but let this continue to be a moment in the times we are facing. And lastly, our great brother said it best in his June 27, 2018 tweet. Do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble. Necessary trouble. Again, on behalf of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, thank you for your time of expression and we salute the life and legacy of our dear brother, the Honorable John Robert Lewis. Go on. I was promised. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Normally we would link up, but yeah. um, in this day and time, oh, we, we can't do that. No.
mayor just like Obama is still my president but to my mayor thank you for the invite to the Buffalo soldiers what you do in this community is awesome don't think that it's not don't think that people are not paying attention because they are but thank you for having me I'm gonna be brief but I do want to make a good point it seems as if the mayor was kind of in my head knowing where I was gonna go with John Lewis I, I want to start off by saying some things that was already spoken about with, with, with John Lewis at 17 years old, he got involved in the civil rights movement. But even before that, he was, at, he was admiring somebody that we all admire to this very day, and that's Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King inspired a young man to get engaged and involved. So when he got involved, he, let me just start with this. He said, Dr. Martin Luther King said, not only are we gonna to have to repent, for the sins of bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. John Lewis, he took it a step further and said, if you see something that's not right, that's not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. He said to do something about it. He did not say to say something about it. He said to do something about it. So at an early age, he got involved. He became a freedom rider. And listen, just in case we forget sometimes and sometimes we do, we think that everything is, that's going on now is the way it's always been. No, he paid a price for being a freedom rider. He paid a price because he did not know whether doing something about it was going to impact him directly with his life. 
Jesus Christ said, and then let me just say this also, whether it's the late Elijah Cummins, whether it's John Lewis, whether it's Reverend Ralph Ab Abernathy, whether Doc, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Reverend Jesse Jackson, those were great men of faith and courage. So when he did something about it, he was actually putting his life on the line. And what I was going to say is that's what Christ said. No greater love that a man has that he laid down his life for a friend. Can you follow me? Yeah. He was willing to lay down his life. We ain't just talking about Bloody Sunday when he's got his head busted open, but we're talking about all those freedom rider stops along the way when he had all kinds of opposition, all kinds of people that would say it. Now they had laws enacted back then too. Now the laws that by the Supreme Court was to say you can't do this, you can't do that, but that who was enforcing those laws? Nobody. So when, when John Lewis became a freedom rider, he put his very life on the line. The point that I want to make, that the mayor already made for me, is that all of us have a moral obligation to do something. Yeah, we're doing something, but the, the greater obligation is to pass that baton, to pass that baton to some young people, to mentor, culture, nurture, to make sure that they're standing up, willing to lay down their life for a friend, for a cause, for a purpose, the civil rights purpose. And, and that's why I'm proud to, you know, people can say whatever they want to say, and I'm okay with that because what the NAACP really is and has been and will be is the foundation is the foundation where we stand up and speak up, where we stand up and do something. And just because we may not be out, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, see how God works, and I'm a man of faith too, he puts the sun away, so we're not standing in the sun, so I can talk for a few extra minutes. But, but the thing is, is that we all have an obligation to stand up and to do something to get young people involved, get young people engaged, get young people willing, I don't know if we can say that, to lay down their very lives for a cause, a mission, and a purpose. The NAACP, our mission is to ensure the educational, social, political, and economic, e economic equality rights for all people and to eliminate racial hatred and discrimination. Does that, and, and what that means is that we actually may have to lay down our lives. If we can get our young people, if, if we know somebody in our churches, in our community, if we can get them engaged, willing to, willing to, to get involved without having their own individual platforms, without having their own individual agendas, saying that I'm doing it for the cause of civil rights. The NAACP is about worker rights, human rights, civil rights, women rights for all rights of all people if we can if all of us collectively and i do believe in, in small numbers just for the record i never believe that you have to have a, a, a whole group of people to do anything because 12 disciples turned the world upside down they went out and, and listen and they had a message and and christ told them if listen if they don't want to hear you shake the dust off your feet and keep it moving my daughter sent me that the other day. She sent me, she said, Dad, don't let people perplex you or distress you. Keep it moving. We keep it moving and we keep on trying to cultivate young people right now to be like a John Lewis, to be like an Elijah Cummings, to be like a, th those leaders back in the day, because back in the day don't mean much now. It, it, it means a lot as far as the shoulders and the foundation, but their voices are, are resonated through us. We have to make sure that young people, just like John Lewis, who was courageous to stand up and to speak up at a time when his very life was on the line, we have to make sure that we have young people that are willing to do the exact same thing. So take it upon ourselves, in the memory of John Lewis, to take it upon ourselves, whether it's in our churches, our homes, our communities, wherever it is. This, this election, this election is, the, is, and you hear it all the time, oh, this is the most important election of our lifetime. Y'all, this is. We can't, we can't endure four more years of what we've just been through. We have to not only encourage them to vote, because that's their duty to vote, but we got to encourage them to get involved and not get involved by saying something, by speaking, but by action. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, thank you.
the next, the choice is between two good speakers, whether it's going to be the host of this place or whether it's going to be our president, Tabono. So it's... The host. <laughs> So whoever can get on, up Bishop. here first, we'll get there first. Do, it yeah. or do it together. There we go. Do it together. Come on together. Uh, let me just first uh, say what what a remarkable evening we have had. Um, again, it is not about the crowd that makes the impact. That's right. It's about the concerted effort, and uh, you all did indeed that. Thank you for thinking of us to come to Glendale uh, here on the south side of Toledo where God lives. We are grateful that you came. What a remarkable day we've had uh, and of course reminiscing over the life of uh, John Lewis, your fraternity brother, and of course one that will go down in the annals of history of being one of our civil rights heroes who just not took a beating but he had passion for what he did. His drive was beyond measure, and he stayed the course. Uh, all of his life, he paid homage to not just who he was as a public servant, but who he was as a person. And so often we lose our identity and who we are as public servants that we forget the fact that we are a part of a human race. John Lewis led, the, led us in holding up the baton of understanding that there is more to life than what you do in front, but it's what you do behind closed doors. Most people will never remember uh, the 20 minute speech that you ever do or the times that he stood on Capitol Hill and spoke. They will remember the lives that he changed in the community in which he served. And so in that regard, we remember such a phenomenal man who again will go down in history as fighting for us to take back what was rightfully given to us just not by this country, but by the God that we serve. We owe the likes of John Lewis, and one who went on just a little before him, the Reverend C.T. Vivian, who also walked the Freedom Trail, uh, who uh, was a part of an incredible fraternity as well. Uh, and we remember that life as well as the life of John Lewis, but today we celebrate not just history, we celebrate heritage. There's a thin line between those two words that seem to be Anglo-Saxon words, and I'm hoping that we will find it within ourselves to tutor ourselves on the difference. My prayer is that we leave this place today with the unction to say that we owe it to those pilgrims that went before us, our pilgrims that went before us, to go to the polls in November to make a difference. Him being beat was not because of who he was. He was beat because of what he stood for and let's make it our business to go and stand for what we believe and what those are saying to be the most important election. Your voice is your vote, and your vote is your voice. And my prayer is that in November, we will allow our voices to be heard through our vote. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not sure if it's back to you or Mr. Earl Mack, who is the president, and you all are pointing at each other again. <laughs> Good job, Pastor. <laughs> All right. And, and